Hello and welcome to the channel. Just hit my computer there if you're wondering what the sound was. Uh, welcome to the channel, I'm Omanus and today I will review the second studio album by the alternative rock band Radiohead. Yeah, I don't know if I said this on record, but um, I'm of course a huge Radiohead fan. Um, yeah, you know, I love pretty much all their albums. I even think that Pablo Honey is, has, has its moments, of course, with, uh, you know, the singles as you can name them off. If you don't know them, then, you know, listen to them, listen to Radiohead. But, I mean, pretty much everyone knows Radiohead at this point, so... Um, I don't think that anyone really wonders what I'm talking about here, but, you know, the most famous Radiohead song for there you go, which the band hates. Uh, pretty obvious, but uh, this is their second studio album. This is uh, this kind of strips it back a bit more. You can definitely hear that they were going into this electronic route. Not per se on the bands because they were still pretty, you know, alternative rock, pretty like basic on this album. Britpop, indie rock, and post grunge. This album is labeled. Um, yeah, I pretty much agree with those labels. I'm not sure about the Britpop and post grunge thing. Indie rock, I can kind of see. The only label I really agree with is, you know, I definitely agree with this alternative rock. That's basically what this album is. I don't, I don't really consider it Britpop. There are some Britpop-esque sounds on this album and some indie rock influences or, you know, I think that Radio pretty much created indie rock and, you know, the, the Smiths and bands in that regard, you know. Post-grunge, you know, you're kind of stretching it there, but sure. Um, yeah, the band's second studio album, this is kind of like their major label debut album. Um, I think this used to be my favorite Radiohead album, uh, when I was kind of still, you know, on the newbie side, I suppose. Still kind of, yeah, just a noob, I would say. Um, now, of course, you know, I love the more experimental shit and the more... Um, you know, diverse stuff that Radiohead has put out after this album. Very diverse discography, of course, and this is kind of like the entry-level Radiohead album. I, I do like this album. It's not my favorite, but it's pretty great. Uh, one of my favorite songs of this album is actually Planet Telex. Telex. I'm not sure how you say that, Planet Telex, but um, a lot of vibey, a lot of like interesting sound going on this uh, on the song Planet Telex. You can definitely hear that they were going into this electronic experimental route with this album a bit more. You know, not, not exactly, but they were trying to change it up more, and that's why, you know, they got a claim for this album later on. Um, you know, um, first people thought, oh, this is like a Pablo Honey um, copycat, you know, because it's kind of like more of a post grunge album. And they're trying to let, replicate the sound of Creep or something, although the band hates that song. So, um, people were very misguided with Radiohead, um, especially around this time, you know, they were getting praise later on. Um, yeah, I love the song because it's vibey, it's very atmospheric, there's a lot of melancholic uh, atmosphere to the song. So, this might be. Yeah, this might be one of my favorites of the album. I don't think it's my absolute favorite because there are a couple singles on there which I really love, so there you go. Uh, the Bands is also a very exceptional song. It's a, it's not, yeah, it's not clickable. But it is the title track of the album. It's not, you know, a very epic title track, I would say, like some, you know, title tracks are. You, you can think of them if you want. Um, but, you know, Black Sabbath or something, Iron May and stuff like that. Uh, the band is um, a good track, I do really like it. Um, and I do really like that it sounds still in that vein of Planet Telex while still, or while um, changing it up a little bit, going more to the Pablo Honey kind of sound, stripping it back a bit more, getting people prepared for the third song, which is pretty much my favorite of the album. So the, the band is a kind of nice um, all song album in general. It is a nice song because it still has, uh, it's still reminiscent of the first song while blending in with the third track which you know makes this album very consistent and the flow is pretty nice on this album which I love too. Um, then we get High and Dry which, which is my favorite song on the album. This is pretty much the most 
straightforward, one of the most um, stripped back, one of the most relaxing radio that song, Don't Leave Me High and Dry, that guitar riff at the beginning is nice. I do really love that, um, that's kind of, you know, that's kind of shy, mellow, kind of lonely, creepy sounding riff. That um, yeah, that Johnny Greenwood makes. I believe that Johnny Greenwood, the guitarist of the band, it kind of looks like an emo fucker. That guy. Uh, I do love you though, Greenwood. But uh, you're kind of emo. I mean, come on now, or, or goth, whatever you want to call yourself. Um, yeah, you know, I love that riff. That kind of shy, kind of you know, just adorable sounding riff. At the beginning, I love that, the, you know, the kind of spastic riff. Or not spastic, but just shy. Shy sounding riff. It's kind of weird, but I love that sound. Um, yeah, just a great song. Melody are, melodies is fantastic. Melodies are fantastic. There you go. I cannot sp uh, speak for shit, but that's nothing new. Yeah, pretty much my favorite song of the album. One of my favorite Radiohead songs. It might change. It might be called Planet Telex. These songs are really close to each other. High and Dry is probably like my favorite at the moment. Planet Telex might be my personal favorite, so it's kind of interchangeable, really. Then we got Fake Plastic Trees, and um, you know, all this entire album I do really love. But there are some singles on there, which I, you know, I love pretty much every song on there. But Fake Plastic Trees is one of those songs that I did really love whenever I first got into Radiohead. I love really, I really love the atmosphere of fake plastic trees. I love the lyrics, you know, talking about uh, that people plant trees, but they are fake plastic fucks, you know. That's a really a relatable song for me. So uh, I do like the lyrics on there. Everything about the song is really great, but for some reason it's not one of my favorites because maybe I've overplayed it a bit. Maybe like I have some bad memories listening to this. Uh, you know, no, not it's it's a great song. I love it, but I kind of have some personal problems with the song because uh, I was really like digging this girl, and I believe I played fake plastic trees for. Or I was listening to the song while I discovered oh she is not interested in me, or I was like in a really depressive. Um, I was in a really depressive time for myself because I was listening to the song while I just discovered, oh, she doesn't want to talk to me because she ignored me and she didn't want to talk online, she didn't want to pick it back up with me. Uh, you know, we did have an age gap of like four years, so it wasn't ideal, but it wasn't impossible. So if she did try, it could have been something, but you know, um, it was kind of a weird, it was kind of a weird relationship. You know, not that we had a relationship, but or, you know, uh, the situation that we were in was really weird. We could have made something out of it, but it's kind of sketchy. That's what I'm trying to say here. So um, because of all that personal shit, I you know it's not one of my favorites because it does give me some like Vietnam flashbacks. Not really, but um, I, I do have some kind of dark memories listening to the song. So it's kind of something personal. I still love the song, but it's not one of my favorites because of that. So there you go. Kind of weird, I know, but there you go. Bones and Nice Dream are nice, kind of melancholic, atmospheric songs, which I like. Bones is pretty stripped back, kind of uh, bare bone sounding, no pun intended. A uh, nice song to kind of go back a bit more to the Pablo Honey route, so this is kind of like a nice diverse song to, you know, kick it back to kind of like a Rolling Stones kind of vibe. You know, I'm not a huge fan of the Stones, but. Um, um, yeah, I don't mind to hear a song like that from this band once in a while, that's nice, you know. Nice Dream has nice, you know, melancholic sounds, I do really love the atmosphere and the production uh, ab around the song. Kind of reminds me of Planet Telex again, uh, I do like the song a little bit less because uh, I just think the Planet Telex was just, you know, perfect for what I tried to achieve. But it's still a really nice second, uh, you know, second place holder. So definitely still a great track, great centerpiece song. And there you go. And then we have uh, pretty much my second favorite single of the album, which is Just. I love this song because it has that acoustic riff. Du, 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 you know, nice acoustic, just really cool sounding. And then it kicks in. And then it just fucking kicks in. You know, that metallic kind of riff comes in. And then you have that, uh, that lyric of Tom York that goes like, 
I can get stink out. It's been hanging around for days. You know, that fucking lyric. I do really love that, especially in the music video, whenever he's making this face. It's just so fucking hilarious. And that guy lying on the floor and shit. It's just a really funny song. I do really love it. It's really diverse. I love um, Colin Greenwood's drums. Yeah, I believe that. Yeah, yeah. Johnny Greenwood is the guitarist, and Colin Greenwood is the drummer, I think. So, or now he's the bass. Uh, Phil Selway is the drummer. Phil does a really great job on the uh, dog, dog drop. He does a really great job on the drums at the ending, especially. And I love that, uh, that really um, chaotic, very skeptical guitar riff at the ending that, you know, builds intention and uh, eventually just kind of climax at the ending. Yeah, I, I'm not going to replicate it because it's kind of cringy, but just listen to it for yourself. It has a really great build, a really great climax, and then it goes back to the you know beginning again. Drums come in and the song, you know, it kind of lingers on and then it ends. It's just fucking perfect. I love it. Uh, then we got My Iron Lung, which is uh, definitely kind of a dark sounding song. This is kind of like a hidden gem single, I would say. Uh, I did really like the song too because it's dark, it's, you know, doom and gloom, which, um, you know, is relatable for me or it attracts me because I'm kind of like that. Uh, My Iron Lung is a great track, uh, lovely lyrics, great production, pretty much, you know, everything that I've said already about any other single, but it's just a bit more uh, doom and gloom, which I like. It's not my favorite song because I do prefer the other singles of the album, but it's still a great single nonetheless. Then we have Bulletproof I Wish I Was, which is a very kind of dark, fucked up kind of sounding song. And I do really like that Radiohead kind of takes this more dark, kind of more um, experimental, um, you know, kind of ominous sounding song, uh, or sound rather, uh, at the ending of the album to kind of make it a more dark, ominous uh, sounding record, which of course appeals to me. And you know, you can definitely hear these final songs that they were, you can definitely hear in these final songs that they were definitely going into this more electronic, experimental, a bit more in this darker kind of route, which I love about the band. So you can definitely hear that with Bulletproof I Wish I Was, you know, wishing you were invincible, but you are vulnerable. Uh, so the band of course wishes that, but you know, it's not possible. I wish I was, so yeah, re relatable song for everyone. So yeah, I can relate. Then we have Black Star, which is also a great Ingwe, Ingwe Malmsteen song, but it's also, uh, it's also a great Carcass song, really. Great fucking shit. Uh, great fucking shit, but uh, we also have the Radiohead song, which I do really love too, but it is the weakest Black Star of those Black Stars, if you get what I mean. But I do still really love this Black Star, because uh, Black Star, Black Star, Black Star, I do love me some Black Stars. David Bowie's Black Star, there you go, fucking four Black Stars in a fucking row, Black Star, Black Star, Black Star. Jesus Christ, shut up, shut up, I know, I know. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm not gonna say that again, but this song is uh, it's pretty good. Uh, around the other black stars, I'm gonna stop now. Great song. I'm gonna move on because I'm kind of getting like an aneurysm black star ish show. Yeah, it's a great song. It's one of my favorites. It's one of my favorite of the, you know, of those that I named. You know what I'm all about. There you go. Great song. Now we got Soak, which is honestly, um, it is my least favorite song on the album because it is kind of like forgettable in a way. Um, I still, you know, I still love every song on this album, but this is definitely the low point of the album because I did kind of forget the song, honestly. Uh, um, yeah, it's good. But yeah, if I did have to name a least favorite of this album, it would be Silk or Bones. Because Bones was nice, but it's, you know, it's bare bones. It kind of reminds me of the stuff, which I'm not a huge fan of, so... Um, so yeah, this is kind of like the bones of the like darker side of the album, which I like, but I don't love like the other songs of the album. And then we got Street Spirit Fade Out, which is of course a classic Radiohead song. Uh, you have of course a very melancholic, ominous, dark sounding uh, guitar lick at the beginning, that acoustic lick. And yeah, actually this song is entirely acoustic, so I do really like that. Um, vocals are really emotional. The song in general has just a really great vibe. I just really love how the song sounds. 
Um, yeah, just a great song, I think. Uh, nice way to end of the album. It's pretty appropriate. So, yeah, great song. I love it. And yeah, I think it's one of the best of the album. It's not. Uh, it's not my favorite single uh, of all the singles that are my favorite. This is my least favorite. If that makes sense. You know, from just and high and dry, this is my least favorite, but it's still one of my favorite songs of the album. I hope that makes sense. Uh, you know, you will get it later if you read the description. So overall, this was a great album. Um, consistency, consistency wise, it was really good. I love the first. Uh, I lo yeah, I pretty much love this entire album. Really, uh, the only. I would say the only songs I didn't really care for were Bones and Silk, but they were not bad. I do like Bones and I do like Silk, but they were like they are my least favorite tracks, but they're still good. So I am tending to give this album a 10, but I do know that this album is not a 10 because really I just got better and better later on, and this album is just kind of like it's good, but it's not perfect. So I'm gonna give this album a 9. Point Mm, uh, yeah, I'm gonna give it a 9.6. Um, yeah, if Silk and Bones were just, you know, better tracks in general or they were removed, I might have given this album a 10, but 9.6 is still good. 9.6, so there you go. Uh, Near Flawless, if only those songs were maybe a bit more interesting or, you know, spice it up a bit more, I would have loved them too. Still good tracks, but, you know, just my least favorites of the album, in my opinion. So, there you go. That's my opinion on uh, the band for Radio Ed. Uh, let me know what you think about it in the comments down below. Uh, I've been on this, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think about Radiohead. Uh, I love them, of course. Um, yeah, I don't think I've really met a person who doesn't love Radiohead, or you know, you have to be like a mainstream top 40 normie. Um, you know, but as in music fans, actual music fans, critics, and shit like that, I mean, a critical darling, so there you go. I don't think I've ever. Uh, met a guy who doesn't love radio ads, so there you go, or a gal for that matter, but you know, person. I've never met a person who doesn't love radio ads, so uh, let me know what you should think about the bands, the bands in general, the bands and the bands, so there you go. Funny joke. Um, yeah, there you go. Um, yeah, I'm gonna eat now, you don't care, but I'm hungry, so I'm gonna end it there. Uh, thank you for watching this video, uh, like and subscribe to the channel for videos like this one, let me know what you think about the album and I will see you in the next one, peace.